Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert, Sean Stevenson, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in with me today. This is a really awesome episode, and this is something we've never done before. We've got not one, but two in-studio guests with me today, and this is a subject that is gaining crazy popularity in our culture, but we're not really addressing why it is, and I'm talking about being hangry. All right. Have you ever been hangry before? Have you caught yourself being a little extra snappy, if not downright evil because you are hungry? All right. You go you go from like you to like Gargamel in like five seconds. And it's because of what's going on with our blood sugar, for example. It's what's going on behind the scenes with our hormones. And it's not a small thing. This is something that we, we've got commercials about when the person is, you know, they're, they're hangry and they're just being such a, a, a diva or an angry person. They hand them a Snickers and your problem's solved. Is it really solved? Absolutely not. You know, it's, it's kind of funny to see, but in our real lives, this turns up as some real issues with how we're managing our emotions and how we're managing our decisions with our food when we are hangry. And so I wanna make sure that you're empowered in this subject matter and talking about what, kind of what's going on behind the scenes with our hormones, what's happening with your thyroid, what's happening with inflammation, all these different components. And I've got the team, the dynamic duo to talk about their new book, Hangry. And this is the five simple steps to balance your hormones and restore your joy. All right. So we're not just looking at feeling good on the fitness side and, and having this outward appearance of health, but we're talking about that internal biology as well. And also what's going on with your emotions and how you're actually feeling. Because ultimately at the end of the day, even if we have a body that we're happy with, if we're not experiencing joy within ourselves, if we're not waking up each day with a sense of, of purpose and feeling a, truly alive, because there's a difference, and I've experienced this where I'm very, very fit, but I feel a little bit like I'm dying. You know, just because I'm not managing what's going on with my hormones. And I'm talking about specifically for me, this was, wow, this was maybe 11 years ago. I got myself to 4.6% body fat. And yeah, it's a way to be super duper lean. You know, I experimented with that. I got to that place. I saw what it was like and... I just didn't feel good. I didn't I didn't feel that same level of energy. Come to find out on a recent episode, which we did a really a masterclass on it, that your fat can talk, your body fat. And when it's that low, you're not producing the same amount of hormones that really keep you regulated. Like uh, leptin is one of the main languages that your fat speaks in. And being able to really modulate your uh, your your satiety and feeling really comfortable and empowered in your body but also it's a big influence on what's happening with your thyroid, which is really the master regulator in many sense of your overall metabolism. And so when we're talking about metabolism, we're really talking about turning food into energy and a big role is being played by your mitochondria. And we've got fat mitochondria and we've got lean tissue mitochondria. We've got bone mitochondria. We've got all kinds. And when we get to a place where we're, again, physically fit, but we can still be experiencing uh, disquiet within our own bodies. And so we want to have it all, really. And we want to be happy with ourselves from the physical side and our physical fitness, which please today, and more than anything, I'm so grateful for this episode because it's not about being perfect and this ideal of what perfection looks like for us and how we're comparing ourselves to so many other people. And it's really tuning into what's best for us and being happy with us and really feeling, feeling empowered. And so really excited about this and super knowledgeable. And I've actually known one of our guests for many, many years and her partnering up with her co-author for this book is just, I think it's a real game changer. So I can't wait to dive in and talk with them about this incredible new book. But a part of dealing with being hangry is simply making sure that you're meeting your basic nutritional requirements. Obviously food is a big driver of that, but even simple mineral deficiencies can cause us to go haywire with our neurotransmitters, our hormones, and enzymes that even help to unlock some of these processes. And so for me, I'm a big advocate of 
taking some kind of an insurance, but the conventional quote multivitamin is definitely not the way to go. Nine, nine times out of 10, because these companies are utilizing synthetic, highly processed, all these fillers and binders, and it's just not appropriate. And sometimes it can even take more from you than it's even given you. And so what do we do? I am a big advocate of whole food based supplements, whole food based nutrition, and also a palate experience. So not just taking a lot of pills, which there are some cases where we could do that, but let's go ahead and have it so that we've, we're getting the green juice, we're having the palate experience and letting that interact with our enzymes and DNA in our mouth. And so I'm, that being said, I'm a big fan of Organifi green juice for meeting those nutritional bases. And this is something my family uses, my youngest son, Brayden, my oldest son, Jordan, my wife and myself, we've been utilizing Organifi for a couple of years now. I'm a huge, huge fan of Organifi, their green juice formula is something I always keep on hand. I travel with it, they have go packs. And even if I'm on a plane, I just uh, tear open a go pack and pour it into a water bottle and I'm squared. I'm getting a huge boost of real whole food nutrition and things that you just don't see in these so-called multivitamins like spirulina, for example, which also has phycocyanin. Phycocyanin has been found clinically to improve and increase your body's production of stem cells. It's called stem cell genesis. What else do you know that can do that? You can't get that from a Flintstone vitamin. You're not gonna produce more stem cells. It's absolutely amazing. So they've got spirulina in the formula, chlorella, which is a natural chelator found to help your body to bind to and eliminate heavy metals. And the list goes on and on. So many great things. The formula is amazing and it tastes good. And I think you're really gonna love it. So make sure you're taking advantage of this. Pop over, check them out. It's Organifi.com forward slash model, 20% off everything they carry. Always, right? Organifi, that's O R G A N I F I dot com forward slash model, 20% off everything they carry. Definitely check out their green juice formula like right now. All right. And on that note, let's get to our Apple Podcast review of the week. Another five star review titled Listen to This Show, You'll Love It by Doo Doo DD. Sean, I've never write reviews on anything, but your show is so good that I had to. I love it. So informative and so many life hacks that they're easy to put into your life right after listening. You talked on an episode about trying to be 1% better every day, using that compound interest to change your life. And truly, your show helps me do that. Appreciate what you're doing. That's so awesome. Thank you so much for leaving me that review. And I love it so much. 1% better. That's really what it's all about. You know, we put so much pressure on ourselves to just transform our entire reality, you know, in the, in a Thanos snap, or should I say, I am Iron Man snap. And the reality is we get to those places of higher success by simply just focusing on incremental progress. And so, wow, thank you so much for sharing that. And I appreciate you so very much, everybody, please pop over to Apple Podcasts, leave a review for the show. And no matter what platform you're listening or watching on, just leave a review, leave a comment and really means the world to me. So thank you so much. And on that note, let's get to our special guest and topic of the day. Joining us today, we have Sarah Fergoso, who's the author and founder of the Everyday Paleo brand, one of the first cookbooks I've ever gotten. And I absolutely love it so much. She was the first woman to blog about living an ancestral lifestyle and now has best-selling cookbooks, a thriving social media platform, and conducts consistently sold out nationwide seminars and worldwide retreats. And she's just super fun. I just love hanging out with her. And our other guest is Dr. Brooke Kalanick, who is a licensed naturopathic doctor and functional medicine physician who attended Bastyr University and has a doctorate in naturopathic medicine and a master's in acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine. Her areas of expertise include female hormonal imbalances, hypothyroidism, and autoimmunity with specialties in PCOS, Hashimoto's, menopause, and weight loss. And they are here today on the Model Health Show to talk about their new powerhouse book, Hangry. I'd like to welcome Sarah Fogoso and Dr. Brooke Kalanick. How you guys doing? We're good. We're so good. So happy to see you guys. I know. I'm Made so Made it happy out to here. Too. You had to look on the map to find us. <laughs> but it's kind of embarrassing, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. You know, this often refer referred to as like a flyover state now. Right. 
Missouri used to, like St. Louis used to be popping. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the World's Fair yeah. back when yeah. there was a World's Fair. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that was like 1900 or something. But it's all good. We got baseball. So. And that's what we've been asked. We like, keep being asked. Are you, yeah. are you here for baseball? And we're like, <laughs> not really, but we should be probably. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We've been asked that twice. Yeah. And so you reside in Chico, yes. California. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. And Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. It's in the house. Yeah. But originally from Montana, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm a long ways from home. Yeah. So you've got like all kinds of flavor. And so that's what I want to talk about first. Cool. So. I would love, and I don't know if you know this, but you were like one of my very first guests. Yeah. Sarah. I this remember was, that. This was like yeah. at least five years ago. It was a long time ago. And mm -hmm. just thank you for that because oh. I barely <laughs> knew what I was doing. You know? <laughs> I knew I had some important stuff to say and great people. And so you've been an inspiration for me for a while. Well, thanks. You made me cry. We already started. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And I'm just honored to be here now. Yeah. This is just so cool to actually be able to keep in touch with you for this long yeah, you know that's when you right, know right. you're with real people that you know and some people there. you know you just you connect with yes mm -hmm. and so but i would love if you would share a little bit of your story because you guys put together yeah. an incredible new book that is so timely so good <laughs> like you guys are getting to the <laughs> point it's like every cool. page has like something tangible and an insight mm -hmm. and it's just really, really well done. I'm excited to get this out for everybody. But you also share a little bit about what brought you to this place. And so yeah. we'll talk about your story first, Sarah. And then I definitely want to share sure. Brooke's story too. Both of them, I was like, what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just what you're saying about the book is um, just so validating because mm -hmm. we put literally our heart and soul hearts and souls mm -hmm. into this book so if just the fact that that's resonating is super cool and that's what we wanted but yeah it, it is our story really honestly the book is our story it's it's why we wrote the book is because of who we are and i feel like my story has so many layers to it yeah. because when i first started everyday paleo and probably when i was on your show it sounded very much like everybody else's story, right? Like I didn't feel good and I, I couldn't lose the weight and I started eating paleo and started doing CrossFit and it was amazing and I got all better and it was fantastic. And that is true on so many levels. Like yeah. that's a really awesome jumping off point for me. But I wasn't truly like settling into what made me okay. Like those are very surface things for me now as far as like exercise and how I eat is, yeah. and I mean, it's deep in that I know what works for me. And we talk about that a lot in the book. Like I'm, I'm committed really to what works for me, but uh, after recording with you, like my life took so many twists and turns where I was like, okay, I am actually really not okay. And I cannot diet or exercise my way out of this. And, you know, my degrees in psychology, I grew up in a family where um, there was a lot of dysfunction, but my mom went back to school and became a licensed clinical social worker. And I saw her do a lot of really deep work on herself, but it never really clicked for me until later, even after getting my degree in psychology, that my mindset is the most important thing. Mm. So I've, I've wow. been through a lot over the last few years with my health being really erratic and my hormones getting totally out of whack. And I'm like, why isn't my awesome diet and exercise not working for me anymore. Like what the heck is going on? Like this, I'm falling apart. Like that was my mantra. I'm falling apart. I'm <laughs> falling apart. <laughs> so, you know, fortunately meeting Brooke was the catalyst for my hormone health to get back on track, but really doing like that intense spiritual work on myself is what actually makes the stuff that I know I need to do for my hormones, my exercise and my fitness stick. It's what makes it work is actually, and this is where I cry, like admitting that you have to love yourself. Cause I used to think that was such a foo-foo thing, right? Like, no, loving yourself is kind of indulgent, you know, like respecting yourself is cool, right? Like you need to have respect for yourself, but actually that's not true anymore for me. I'm like, you have to, I personally have to lean into what that means to put myself first, not in a selfish way, but in a way that makes everything else sustainable, including my relationships with the people that I love, yeah. right? Like none of that for me can be sustainable anymore unless it's all okay in here and in my heart and in my spirit. So, so that's kind of my story where now my mission, our mission is to help other women 
be who they are yeah. and okay with that no matter where they are. And then the rest is kind of easy to figure out, right? Like mm. how to do the diet and the exercise. And I know we're going to get deep into yeah, that, for but, sure. but it's how I have to live my life too. Every yeah. Day. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, just a little quick summation, you know, you got to a different level with the nutrition and with the exercise, mm -hmm. but then you add on top of that, all the other stuff, all the other responsibilities, all the things that you are even culturally as a woman supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. and then you have a breakdown, oh, you know? Yeah. And so our diet and exercise can't necessarily save us. And so it's creating a foundation to really build on. And that's what you guys are presenting. Right. So thank you for that. So, and that's just a little bit <laughs> just a little of bit. the story. Just a little bit. <laughs> Brooke, I would love if you could share a little yeah. bit of your story as well. And how, like, first of all, you know, you took a different path in getting yeah. into the health space. So yeah. what inspired you to do that? So I think I always knew medicine and science was my jam. That was always what I was good at and what I, and I had always planned on being in a much more conventional medical situation. And um, that's how I thought I would practice. And I even went to pharmacy school and as a pharmacist, and a pharmacy student, I was falling apart in grad school. I got in really, I was too young. I wasn't, it was really hard. And um, so my health was suffering and I was getting nowhere with, um, and I got kind of diagnosed with PCOS in high school. I didn't have a real explanation of what that meant for my hormones or my health. I was told to, you know, eat a lot of rice cakes, keep my blood sugar balanced mm, and, you know, yo, yeah, yeah, <laughs> magical rice cakes. And so none of that was really working for well for me. And then as my stress went up in school, I really started to, I guess I felt like I was falling apart. I know now it was not that big of a deal, um, but it was hard and I was getting nowhere in my model, right? In the conventional model, the pill wasn't working for me. The, you know, the nutrition advice wasn't working and I had to kind of explore and I ended up seeing a naturopathic doctor change my world. And I look back now at what she did for me and it was so subtle. She taught me how to cook vegetables a little differently, get a little more. I mean, I liked exercise, but I was doing, I was overdoing it. Yeah. And, um, so she helped with that, a few, little adrenal support, some B vitamins. Mm -hmm. And I was like, got off dairy, new person. So it kind of opened up my world that there was so much more to offer the people I was going to be working with in healthcare than what I was doing. And after sort of three kind of life-changing experiences with her, I decided I needed to leave and go to naturopathic medical school. And so I did. And throughout that, I sort of stumbled upon paleo to kind of help with my own hormonal issues. And like Sarah, changed my world. Everything with my PCOS, my hormones got better. And that was all fine and good until like what happens with women is things change, right? So what works for you in this, in my twenties with this condition was fine. And then I went through a terrible period of stress and none of that worked anymore. I was overdoing the exercise, underdoing my carbs, like it was all blowing up in my face. And so what became my work that I do is, um, you know, to help women know how to navigate the inevitable changes, whether it's a new diagnosis or a normal phase of life, having a baby going, you know, through perimenopause and we get so attached to what works. And then we just want to, when things get, feel off track, we, we go back to that thing that we did when we were 17 and it doesn't work. So so that became, I guess, the work that I do as far as hormones go. And then what Sarah and I both saw with the women where we sort of came together was the women we're working with, especially some of them are pretty savvy. Like they listen to your show and they mm -hmm. followed Sarah already and they had all so much stuff dialed in and it still wasn't working because none of the who they are and expressing their truth and feeling like they have the right to pursue just what makes them happy, like mm -hmm. that there's any time for that, right? Um, and we realized that was the big missing piece that for the two of us, we agreed on everything about nutrition and fitness. And then we got really excited about all this other stuff that we want to help women build that foundation on there so that the wellness and health stuff doesn't feel so bad and feel so overwhelming. Oh, this is some real stuff here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We've been there. Oh, so God. we're still there. We're still there. <laughs> you know, and this just brings to point um, one of the statements early in the book. It's a quote that you guys have. Uh, well, I'm quoting you guys. <laughs> and it says that women are plagued with this notion that we have to do it all and look mm -hmm. good doing it. And I definitely, you know, I'm, I'm in, a, in a little bit of a different position than a lot of uh, other fellas, but it's by choice, like putting myself in that position of the majority of uh, clients over the years I've worked with have been women. Yeah. And so hearing the stories, really paying attention and seeing that that's a big consistent, but it's, it's cultural. It's not like somebody told them to be that way, right. but it's really kind of drilled in. And that leads to a lot of dysfunction. 
So what made you guys like kind of just make that as one of the hallmark things we're addressing? Oh, for so many reasons. And I think, you know, personal reasons. And then of course, too, the women that we work with and just seeing the validation that they need to, like Brooke said, be who they are and settling back into what I think is so important, no matter where you are on your health journey is owning your moment, like wherever it is right now, even if it's that you feel awful and your hormones are completely out of whack and you don't like how your genes are fitting and you feel this sense of comparison on a daily basis, like we talked about offline, like social media comparison is so rampant right now where we don't even have time to figure out who we are or how we're supposed to be in the world because we're so distracted by the constant input of what other people are telling us with these mega fitness Instagram stars and people who look perfect at any and every angle and whatever it is that they're putting up. If they're in their kitchen making breakfast, they look perfect and their breakfast looks perfect and their family looks perfect. And real life is not perfect. It's messy and it's humbling and it's scary and it's hard and it's without makeup and it's, you know, without the perfect pants. It's all of those things. So, you know, in order to really show up for your life, we have to own every single one of those moments. And the flip side to that is we really don't know how the, that semblance of perfection feels like for those people. Like we don't know. And I can tell you flat out, like at my most lean and shredded where people are like, oh my God, you look amazing. What are you doing? I'm like, I feel like garbage. Mm. <laughs> like, I actually want to die. Like yeah. this is not what health looks like health for me, like I say, I want women to look at each other when they walk into a room and look at the light in their eyes Mm. and their smile and listen to them. Like we just really need to be heard. Like what is it that you're saying to me that you feel is really important so I can hear you and have empathy for you and be with you in that? Like that's beautiful. Like that's showing up for life and being you know, shiny and happy on the outside is great, but that truth is so much, it feels so much better when you can just own exactly where you are right now because health is so fluid. We don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. So if this is as good as we're going to get right now, because I still struggle with stuff, right? Like I still have to dance with my hormones and stay committed to what works for me. But if I don't own it right now, then that misery of like, well, maybe tomorrow I'll look better. Maybe Mm -hmm. next month I'll get into that gene size. It's, you're never going to feel happiness, joy, right? Like that it can't, you can't sit with that joy when you're always focused on yeah. Yeah. And how, so how do I look yeah. good doing all of this stuff? Yeah. And <laughs> we both fell into it too. And we obviously saw this with all the women we work with that when it's not working mm-hmm. and you're feeling like garbage and maybe you're getting in the workouts and maybe you're sticking to the plan and we don't listen, <clears throat> you know, and there's some mm-hmm. reasons for that, but you know, some women just don't understand what those signals are, like the appetite going up and the sleep falling apart and their energy being in the tank. Um, and what women tend to do is we take it on as there's something wrong with us. Like I need to try harder. Mm-hmm. I need to work out more. I need to get more, push, push. you know, and we push, yeah. and we push, and we push, you know, again, because it's, we're just not, it's not in our nature to just stop and take care of ourselves. We've got a lot of other people to take care of. Mm-hmm. And whether it's internal or societal, there's that pressure again to like, you better do it better. And um, so we just saw women continually wrecking their hormones for the sake of doing all the right health stuff. And we've done it. You know, we talk about that in our intro to the book. Like we are both um, really thrive on stress and we push and Mm -hmm. we had to learn that lesson the hard way. And so part of what we wanted to do with the book is help women see those signals and understand what their hormones are saying. Mm -hmm. So they know when they need to start doing it differently. Yeah. This is one of the most important, and it might be the first Mm -hmm. time anybody has said it on the show, but just talking about the fact that health is fluid because we do probably subconsciously have this idea that we'll get to this place and everything's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I figured I it out. Just get to this place, <laughs> and then it's just like, and then I'll I can get my maintain, wings and I'll you know? fly. Yeah. But things happen, you know, mm-hmm. and we're going to have interactions. Even if you're eating the very best personalized diet, you might get a, you know, a suspicious batch of something, you yeah. know, you like, it, we have to be able to listen to our bodies and to adjust. And so thank you for talking about that. And your plan in the book is to take people from being a hangry. B- <laughs> to a happy babe. Yeah. yeah. And 
one of the foundational things and what I really love is you start the conversation with the thing that, you know, I've been talking about this for a long time. We're talking about your hormones yeah, and really giving people some fundamental, but just like really eye-opening insights about some of these hormones that are operating behind the scenes and giving us these experiences. Because what we're really, our feeling is really a result of what's happening with our hormones. So let's talk about some of those. Let's start with that, um, that you guys feel are really important. And you went through like some real, some hitters. Yeah. But we'll get to a couple of them. So let's talk about some of those. Yeah, well, so what happens for women is they go to their doctor and they're like, I'm tired, everything's falling apart. And they do a, sometimes a skimpy battery of tests or what happens oftentimes. And so the, a lot of women's like fatigue and, you know, depression and overwhelm and unhappiness is, is written off as like, well, you're a busy mom and you're busy running a company and you're getting older. And our favorite one is, well, all the women in my practice feel that way. It's it's, totally it's normal because it's common. And yeah. we wanted to really point out, you know, what's going on for women is it is very common, mm -hmm. but it's not normal. And it's definitely they're not thriving. Right. And we've been in that in that place. And so what we wanted to do was, you know, with so many we know so much about hormones now. right? I know you've had all kinds of detailed, you know, explanations of hormones on with experts on your show. And I think especially when women are consumers of health information, they're really, it, that stuff is, it's so much of it. Mm -hmm. And we know really cool hormones and really cool stuff about the brain. And women are forgetting the basics of stress and blood sugar and thyroid health. And so we really wanted to kind of bring it back to yeah. those hormones because that's what we have the most control over. It doesn't always feel like it, but we can control how we eat and how much stress we're having in our lives, how much we're recovering. And so our plan talks a lot about insulin and cortisol, mm -hmm. you know, and those are our two hormones duking it out all day, trying to keep our, our, one of our acronyms for how your hormones are talking to you is ACEs. And all day long, we're dealing with appetite, cravings, energy, and how well we're sleeping. And those are two hormones that throughout the day, we're getting those feedback. You know, we eat something that doesn't work for us at lunch. We had too many carbs and our insulin goes up and we're tired. And now we need a coffee, probably with a little bit of sugar in it because our cravings are going up. And just giving women the power to know, like, I know what that means and not make themselves wrong. Like, well, I don't have enough willpower to not get a cookie at three o'clock. It's like, no, I can just look back. Maybe I need to up the protein a little bit. Maybe I need to, you know, uh, had from some more vegetables, maybe work on what my unique carb tolerance is. And just helping women really understand those basic signals of some really key, but they're not very exciting, right? Nobody's mm -hmm. talking about cortisol and insulin anymore. They're kind of not very sexy. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like, so, but these, you know, cortisol is our main stress hormone and it helps our blood sugar come up between meals, helps it stay regulated throughout the night. It's important, you know, in our immune system and insulin's the one that brings it back down. And so it's, they're really, again, fundamentally hormones that are talking to us all day. So we're getting a lot of biofeedback and they're ones that we can really make a big impact on with our, our lifestyle choices. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And even something like cravings, mm -hmm. like yeah. you guys talk about how your cravings are related to the interaction specifically of mm -hmm. uh, insulin and cortisol. Yeah. And instead, what we do is beat ourselves up, right? Like, oh, my God. Mm. Like we say in the book, all of a sudden, I'm like two glasses of wine in and a pint of Ben and Jerry's. I don't even know what happened, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so much of that, too, is just about being more present in your body and being able to tune in to what your insulin and cortisol is telling you, right? So always going back to the mindset stuff. When we're in our heads all the time, we're behaving in ways that we aren't necessarily proud of or that aren't even who we are that we know we do things that don't work for us with our diet and our exercise because we're up here and we're not here and we're not tuning in and we're unable to listen to those hormonal cues because we're just like what we called ourselves. We're a mess. We're falling apart or it's, it's how I feel all the time. So we get used to that discomfort rather than having to kind of sit in what's really almost more uncomfortable is our reality, like our truth of where we're at, you know, like, okay, now I really need to start paying attention. And it opens, it exposes us to our own yeah. stuff, right? Like, wow, this is how I behave in this moment. And it's not my fault. It's not like I'm a bad person. <laughs> it's my hormones are telling me things are out of whack. And then I'm in my head all the time. I'm not managing my stress well enough to even be in tune with that. So we're just really trying to help women keep it as simple as possible. Like be in your own body and listen to what it's telling you. Like step one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think that so many women feel like they hate their hormones or their hormones hate them. They right. feel like they're in this 
and we're like, your hormones are trying to save your life all day long. Yes. They're trying so hard to do what they need to do in our crazy lifestyle of the stress and the lack of sleep and the overdoing it in so many ways. And so we kind of call it like their secret hormone decoder ring. When they learn these symptoms and we tried to break it into little acronyms so that it was something you could remember and use and again, give that power back to a woman to say, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just, that's my hormones talking. Right. And this is what they're saying. And I now know what I can do different to take better care of myself. Yes, awesome. So one of the things in the book that you talk about specifically with food cravings is that it's due to blood sugar swings. And so how does how is cortisol involved in a blood sugar swing? Yeah, well, I think we think, if you know, if you know a little bit about hormones, we think of insulin as the blood sugar hormone, right? That's going to be the one that's secreted when you eat and help you get that fuel into your cells for use. But the other side of that coin is cortisol. The other, So it's, you know, the dance that they do all day where it, your blood sugar goes down, your body sees it as a bit of a stress response and it, it acts accordingly. So we have fuel and then insulin brings it down. And so it's this thing that they do all day. And part of the issue is, you know, again, we're wired to survive, right? We've got this great stress response that's very robust. It's, um, you know, hops right too for the most part. And we exp are calling on it constantly. It is not in, you know, and we know this, right? It's not the acute stress that's meant to do, but we're just asking it to get us to work on time. And we're stressed about this thing with our job and this going on with our kids. And we're unhappy with how our body looks. And we're feeling like this conversation we can't have with someone in our life. And there's all this stuff. And then we're not getting enough sleep. And so cortisol is that other piece of blood sugar all the time. And I think sometimes we look at, you know, say we stop eating sugar, and our cravings are improved. So that's, you know, that's a big insulin impact. But what about, you know, we talk about a little bit in the book, what, what, when we can't trust your cravings. So there are some women that just those signals, either they're just not as clear or they've tuned themselves out for so long and they don't, you know, they're just not tuned in. But there's also, you know, times when things are going on in our physiology that can make our cravings a little bit confusing, right? So there's the basic stuff we talk about with blood sugar and stress, but there's some things like inflammation. You know, I always call inflammation the great hormone mess maker because it doesn't matter what, if you've got inflammation, all of your hormones are affected from cortisol to thyroid to estrogen. So it's can be a bit murky. And we know we've got a lot of women dealing with a lot of inflammation. We've got autoimmunity on the rise. We're eating food that's crazy to our, you know, immune systems, stressed. We're not getting enough sleep. We're working out too hard sometimes or not working out at all. So there's so many things that impact inflammation for us. And that can be something that drives cravings for people. And then our unhealthy guts. So we've got candida or other types of gut infections or leaky gut. And maybe we eat a food and we instantly feel tired and craving caffeine. And it's not necessarily because it has anything to do with insulin, but it, it could be because you're having a sensitivity to that. So there's things can get a bit murky. And we talk about those things a bit, but I think when those things are going to come into play after women have kind of really dealt with the stress and the good nutrition and the recovery and not overdoing it as much. This is the biggest thing here. And, you know, it's just seeing so many people over the years who just feel like I'm eating all the right stuff, I'm mm -hmm. exercising, and they're just not getting the results right. and not really understanding how stress is such. It's the thing is, and even, you know, you guys talk about this specifically, that your blood sugar can rise from something you ate or can rise from, from stress. stress. From yeah. stress yeah. And people aren't getting that part because stress doesn't have any calories, right? right? <laughs> so like mentally, it's just like, oh, it's not a big deal, but it actually is. And so what you mentioned in the book are these secret stressors, right? They're secret stressors. And there's a whole slew of them because it's a lot of stuff that's going on behind the scenes we might not think about. And some of them, it just might not seem like it's a big deal too. I think that there were phases where you guys felt like that. Like, I got this handled, I got this. Mm -hmm. But they're just adding more and more. It's like little uh, little feathers getting added. And before you know it, it's just like you got a whole chicken stand on top of you. I don't know why I said that, but yeah. so let's talk yeah. about that. Let's talk about some of these secret stressors. Mm -hmm. Well, Brooke touched on one, which I think is so important, which is inflammation, right? Yeah. Like we don't think about that as being stressful and we don't even really know what to look for when we say we're inflamed. Like, what does that even mean, right? Mm -hmm. Like we think something really acute like cancer, right? Or um, heart disease where, oh, that's inflammation. But 
inflammation can be present and tricky in so many subtle ways that cause such a huge stressful impact on the body. And then, of course, my favorite of all is just not being who you are, like just not being like we already we covered that, not in great detail, but in in a lot of detail, just not being present, not being mindful and the little things throughout the day that affect our cortisol and our insulin that cause so much just disruption in our bodies. So, you know, we're, we're not delicate flowers. Like I don't want that to sound, you know, I don't, we don't want to come across like, oh my gosh, we're so like the opposite is true. We're very robust and we are so adaptable and we can put our bodies through so many things. Right. But we don't focus on the stuff that is not as obvious, right? Like, Starving yourself, obviously, is very stressful. Dieting is very stressful. Mm. Over-exercising is incredibly stressful. Under-exercising is incredibly stressful. But all of this stuff can cause inflammation, too, right? And we don't equate it to that. So It's hard to see, right? Like, you cut your arm. You're like, hey, that's bleeding. That needs to heal. And all this stuff going on in our biochemistry, you can't see it, right? And, Mm. you you know, we can see it because we're all trained to see, like, the dark circles under the eyes and the, you know, the puffiness. Or, like, we can see some of that stuff. But, um, yeah, the average person, it's inside. And they, you know, again, so many – who feels – bloated after they eat like everybody, everybody. who talks to their pe- friends are like that's just how you feel and mm-hmm. you know so there's so much of that that I think um we just don't see because right. it's inside and some of that you know is inflammation blood sugar swings uh, nutrient deficiencies an unhealthy gut there's so many things that you know as a woman we're like I don't think of, or as a person I don't think of my blood sugar as a stressful thing mm-hmm. right but you need a stress hormone to sort it out if it's up and down, right? So there's that. And like Sarah was saying, there's other things we don't think of. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't think we spend a lot of time thinking about me not being able to express my truth, to be who I am, to even remember what makes me happy as a stressor. But it is, you know, because we go through life people pleasing and saying yes to stuff we don't want to do or yes to stuff we don't have time for. And we know like running late is stressful. We know missing a night of sleep is stressful. But there's so much stress in our lives right now and we have to tend to all of it. And, you know, again, people that are really consuming a lot of health information, like they've got, you know, some knowledge about not eating packaged foods and stuff and getting some exercise. And yeah, we sometimes just miss all of that other stuff that's right. going on. What if that extra 10 pounds was due to people pleasing? Yeah, right. Like it's very difficult to mm-hmm. wrap your mind around yeah. it, but it's very yeah. true. And ma- matter of fact, People pleasing is PP. We'll call it PPing. Yeah. You're PPing everywhere. <laughs> right. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's totally messed up. But you no, really got to get that it's under true. control, you yeah. know, control that bladder, I guess. Well, so, yeah. yeah, this is it's, what's so interesting is, and I love that, th- that we're talking about this, is that we talk so much about, which we're going to talk more about this, the nutrition side. Mm-hmm. But I really want today for us to just truly, truly understand how powerful our minds are. In influencing our, our our physiology, and another thing that we covered here, well, we've yet to cover that I want to cover, is oxidative stress, and this is something that again a lot of people don't really think about, but it's happening all the time. It's a natural part of mm-hmm. you know being alive, but when it runs rampant. It can be one of those stressors. So let's talk a little bit about that. Well, and again, it's one of those stressors you don't see, right? We don't necessarily see how that on the outside. Um, But one of the things that a lot of women deal with is just fatigue and brain fog. And they don't really know where it's coming from. And again, you're often told like, well, I'll working moms feel that way or all women over 40 feel that way. And it's just so common. And so we do so much stuff. We live in a polluted environment. I mean, again, what if your stress is coming from your plastic water bottle, right? There's these, you know, things that add to our hormone burden and to our immune system burden and our immune systems, especially as women are so adaptable. You know, we have the way our hormones are able to fluctuate and our immune system changes during pregnancy, right? Baby is part you, but it's not totally you, but your body doesn't treat it like a virus or a parasite, right? So because of the way women's estrogen and progesterone can interact with the immune system, we can do this amazing thing to be very adaptable. But what has happened in our modern world is we have these hormones that are you know, really shifting our immune system, um, especially estrogen. And we're interacting with, again, so many endocrine disruptors in plastics and pesticides in our food supply and modified food or changed food that our immune system sees as different. And so women especially, and we know this, immune autoimmunity is much more prevalent in women than men. 
And I think one of the reasons is our estrogen. I think one of the reasons, too, is the stress, the extra stuff we we take on. Um, and oxidative stress is a huge component of our immune system. So we're reacting to things, and it's it's basically resting on the inside, right? That is a, mm-hmm. a you know, just like an apple turns brown or metal when it comes in contact avocado. with water. Avocado. Avocado, yes. I know, it just it hurt a little bit <laughs> so when sad. I thought about it. You've got about seven <laughs> seconds before an avocado goes bad, yes. right? Like it's between perfect <laughs> and when it's done. Um, and something else that we see as far as oxidative stress goes is, um, you know, unhealthy guts, m- women who are eating fruits and vegetables and eating antioxidants, but their gut's a mess for a variety of reasons. And so they're not getting maybe the nutrition that they think they're getting based on how smart they are with their food. And then the over-exercising. So again, you know, the oxidative stress and oxidation is something that goes on all the time, like you said, but we overdo it. And it really is just kind of tearing us apart on on the inside slowly but surely. So what are two nutritional um, things to target for dealing with os- oxidative stress? Well, one of the easiest ones is eat more fruits and vegetables, right? So just make sure you're getting brightly colored things in your in your food. And then... Which are an indication of antioxidants. Antioxidants, right. yeah. They mm-hmm. are the colors. They are the pigments, right? right. That's the, bre- the red and the yellow, and the orange, mm-hmm. the purples. Um, and then another thing as far as nutrition goes is going to go back to blood sugar. So anytime our blood sugar is out of whack, it is, you know, and this is how we measure hemoglobin A1C, right? We're looking at glycation and oxidation. And, you know, when you look again back to blood sugar, so simple, um, but it is a true marker of, you know, this normal thing in our modern world that has gotten out of control. So I'd say eat your vegetables, eat, make sure that you're, uh, this is not nutrition related, but make sure you're not over-exercising, that you are not feeling like a truck hit you. Mm. after you've had your workouts, um, which kind of flies in the face of a lot of styles of, of training. Um, so that's not a nutrition one, but I'd say balance your blood sugar and eat your veggies. Again, so boring. So yeah. simple. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about more about exercise, but yeah. with going too hard, doing too much, we can also eat more easily become dehydrated, oh. which is another one of those Absolutely. potential stressors. Secret stressors. So. Secret stressors. Right. Yeah. Right. And then we think we're drinking enough water because we're peeing all the time, but that's actually a sign that you're not even hydrated, right? Like if you're just peeing out, we're talking about pee a lot on this show. (laughs) But you know, if you're just peeing out everything that you're drinking, that doesn't necessarily mean you're hydrated, right? And so again, another secret stressor like we talked about, but- It's electrolyte imbalance. It's a really common one. Yeah. And I'm so glad you brought up, of course, we talk a lot about eating your vegetables in the Mm. book, but I mean, it was something that I- it's like we forget the importance of that, especially when we adopt a paleo diet. Like it's so easy to- eat your protein, right? And get get your coffee in, eat your protein, drink your water. And I used to forget about salads. Like, and I love vegetables, but Mm. it's such an important component to health overall. And we've just poo-pooed them for so long now. Like it's, they're not that important, like the carnivore diet, but for (laughs) women, I'm sorry guys, we need to eat our vegetables. Yeah. So we got pee pee and poo poo. Yes. <laughs> so this is like super preschool, but yeah. well, we have super little evolved. kids. Yeah. Toddlers in my house. So yeah. what, with the hydration, what are what's something that we can make, do to ensure that you know even if we're drinking a lot of water, and I know mm-hmm. some people experience this, but they're not really feeling like they're hydrated. Right. They're not retaining that, especially if they're doing like a keto approach or something like mm-hmm. that. Yes. Whereas carbohydrate helps your cells to basically hold on and store water. Right. What should we do? So, well, and that's another thing that comes up with uh, what's commonly called a adrenal fatigue or HPA axis dysfunction. Mm-hmm. So this discoordination between our brain and adrenals. And that was actually kind of what we started writing the book yeah. about. It became a lot bigger than that. Right. Um, but that's something that plagues so many of us, uh, this inability to kind of keep a normal t- timed cortisol rhythm throughout the day because we're constantly calm Mm-hmm. upon it and eventually it gets sort of out of balance. Um, but, you know, the cortisol is not the only hormone that our adrenal glands make and aldosterone is a big one. And so as we get into that more lower cortisol place or more of that dysfunction between our brain and our adrenals, you know, we need electrolytes. And some people have had some success with just doing some sea salt in their water or things like that. But a lot of women need those other minerals. They also need potassium. They also need magnesium. So sometimes a more robust electrolyte mm-hmm. formula is such a game changer. And then there's many reasons why we're 
peeing too often, right? So women with blood sugar dysregulation, you know, when insulin, mm-hmm. like you said, you know, yeah. insulin's one of the things that's going to, with the carbohydrates triggering the insulin, and that's going to be one of the things that affects our kidneys to hold on to those minerals. And so when you go on a keto diet and insulin goes really low, we're not retaining sodium in the kidney. And so again, electrolytes are such a game changer for someone who does try a low carb diet or keto to not have that, you know, keto flu. Um, women with PCOS like myself, you know, we can be, I call us mineral leakers. We tend to just lose too much stuff because of our insulin resistance via urination and electrolytes. So simple. And again, such a, maybe because of the adrenal stress, it's, um, one of those secret stressors. Like who thinks like that's what is causing their stress again? What if that's the difference between the five pounds or whatever is Mm -hmm. is some electrolytes? Simple thing. And when I first met you face to face, uh, we were at Paleo FX, we I believe. Were. It was a paleo yeah. conference in Austin. Mm-hmm. And I had just left on it headquarters, which is in Austin. Okay. Which yeah. I love those guys. Uh-huh. And they actually just sent me a new um, mineral electrolyte mm-hmm. formula that they have. And they do everything from earth grown nutrients. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it's like food based. And like these simple things. The reason I love them is like the brand is so cool. Sure. They've got yeah. so, like, th- th- at their facility, they've got like one of the top, like, uh, MMA training sites and uh-huh. stuff like that. All these NFL players train there and hockey players and mm-hmm. Joe Rogan and all this stuff. <laughs> and so it's a really cool place, but they're always like pushing the envelope on like, what is next? And yeah. it's so funny that these electrolyte products are coming out, but also there, you got to be mindful of folks are doing it the right way and, yeah. and getting those key components, like you just said, because it could just yeah. be sprinkle some salt. That might not work for everybody. Right. Matter of fact, for a lot of people, it's not going to work. So, uh, by the way, guys, check out on it. It's <laughs> on it.com forward slash model. It's O N N I T dot com forward slash model. You get 10% off everything they carry. I love their um, MCT oils. I use it every single day. They're emulsified MCT oil. It's so good. And this is like instant cell food. So, pop over there, check them out. They got so many cool things in their equipment. They, I think they're the only fitness company partnered with Marvel, which we were just talking about. <laughs> this. Marvel. So they've got like Iron Man kettlebells oh, and oh, like fun. Captain America shield weight plates and just, <laughs> it's insane. Check them out on it.com forward slash model. And so I would love now if we can talk a little bit about some of the solutions for mm-hmm. these secret stressors. Like let's get very specific because we're talking about you know, being more mindful, but how do we develop that capacity? Like, what are some things that we can start doing? Uh, We have so many tools in the book. And the reason we have so many tools is not to overwhelm women, because the last thing that you want to do to an already stressed out woman is to give her something else to do. And that's what dieting is, right? And that's what an exercise plan is. It's something else to put on your already 12,000 mile long to-do list that we can never get through. And then we feel less than, and we feel like we're lacking. And it goes back to all the stuff that we were just talking about, right? So very specific, like keep it simple. So we have our five habits to start with. And that's where everybody will start in the book and in our plan. You know, we've been coaching women online online for a couple of years now with this plan. And it's easy to remember. And it's just a jumping off point, right? Like five habits. That's all you got to think about every day. So We talk about five walks per week. We talk about women starting with four meals per day, which is a jumping off place. Everyone gets freaked out. Like, but what about my intermittent fasting? And what about, you know, reset your metabolism a little bit, you know, kickstart things, get your body. Learn something. Yeah. Yeah. Get your body listening to itself finally. And then three strength training sessions a week, which again, that might look different for you down the road. And then at least two liters of water a day. And I think we think the most important thing is one real commitment, one commitment to real self-care, which is a real commitment, but Mm -hmm. one commitment to actually doing something for yourself that's meaningful. And, you know, we talk about how it's cool to go get a manicure and a massage, but is that something that really makes you sit with yourself and that touches your soul and that sparks joy in your life? So what can you do every single day that is fundamentally part of who you are and gets you back in touch with yourself. So we have our five habits. And then of course, the foundation of our book is our pillars, which we don't have to go through all of them because it's kind of intense, but that's like the mindset component, right? So we want women to be able to customize those five habits to be able to work for them. But if you just start there, and I think probably one of our most important pillars is opting out of overwhelm 
because like we just mm. said a second ago, how we're asking women to do more things, but we also have to ask you to take something off your plate right mm. now. Like we can't keep saying yes to everything. Like we have to learn how to not be the people pleaser, right? Yeah. Like we have to learn first how to show up for ourselves. So what can you stop doing today? So even if that's all your listeners take from this podcast, really sit back and look at what you're committing to on a daily basis that's not serving you, yeah. that's getting in the way of you actually focusing on making your health a priority, that is making you go in your head and question yourself and second guess the things you actually need to do to be healthy. Like what can you start saying, this is not as important as me, as my health, as my family, you know, as taking that walk, as making sure I eat more vegetables. You know, there are things that we add on and stack up that on our deathbed will be meaningless, right? Mm. Like, no, you wow. don't have to go to every parent meeting that they all sit and complain about things that will never change. You don't have to do that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you don't have to say yes to every carpool. Like, you can ask your friends for help. Like, you can go to your tribe and say, I need you to show up for me today. I can't do this. Yeah. And it's such a freeing feeling when you can admit that we're not super powered. Like, we need we're, help. we need help. Yeah. We need each other. So. Wow. And that's a big thing that's missing from today's culture, Ugh. you know, and one of the things that you've really successfully helped to kind of develop in the culture, you know, with CrossFit right. and even in the paleo community of like, but also I'm specifically talking about proximity mm -hmm. and having like mother-in-laws and aunties and, you know, and, and, and cousins and people together to help everybody with the different things going on. We're so isolated. We're like yeah. in our little, in our little fortress and then it's like you versus the world, you know, like you got your tiny little tribe of like you and your significant other and some little ones. And that's not how we're wired up. No. You know, mm -hmm. so actually getting outside of that, asking for help mm -hmm. and you can find it. That's the thing, you know. Right. And so with that said, we've got family members we can talk to because, again, we want to seem like we got all together. Yeah. A lot of times we're talking to family. And also you can build it. You can, Absolutely. you know, talk because when you start talking with other people and women talking with other women, you start to hear like, oh, you feel like I do. Yeah. Yes. You know, like <laughs> let's actually put some cooperation together, some cooperation right. and let's help each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah. One of my closest friends when our kids were little and we both had lost our moms, she, she had lost her mom to cancer. And so, it, so had I, and we met soon after that. And Neither of us have a lot of help in close proximity to us. And I remember her telling me, Sarah, I want to help you. We just all think <laughs> that we don't, that people don't want to help each other, yeah. but I love you and I want to help you. And, I, and it really made me sit and think about my own self. I'm like, yeah, I, that's all I want to do is help people. So why can't I honor someone else enough to understand that they want to help too? Like it's, it takes away their ability and their capacity to be their own true loving selves when yeah. we don't ask and we don't allow. And even in my own relationship with my husband, I've learned so much over the years, how communication just between the two of us is of the utmost importance. Like he wants me to be okay. He wants me to be happy yeah. and healthy. He's not trying to beat me down, but I create this scenario in my own mind that I have to do this all on my own and that it's expected of me. And that's my story. That's not anyone making me do that or feel that way. It's all my own stuff. And so many women operate on that level because like what we talked about, we have to do it all and we have to look good doing it. And never before, a hundred years ago, we weren't, that yeah. wasn't a requirement, you know? Right. <laughs> it wasn't our reality. So I think just opening up your voice, women, and talking about this stuff is so important and having so much compassion for yourself in the process. Yes, I love it. Let's talk about some more of these pillars. So that is <laughs> opt out of overwhelm. And by, so again, there's five that you guys cover. So I'll let everybody get the book and you can check out all of them. But let's <laughs> get to maybe one or two more, uh, more of them. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, find and commit to what works mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. This is the first one we kick off the book with because I think we've got women are usually in one of two camps and they either 
don't have any idea what works for them. Like they're very confused about, I don't know, should I be keto? Should I be paleo? AIP? You know, we kind of know the standard American diets, maybe not where it's at, but there's <laughs> so many options. So some women are still really trying to figure out, like, I don't know what I need to be doing and I don't know what my hormones are telling me. And so that's kind of how the program starts is like, if you don't know, we're going to put you on this like kind of hybridized uh, version of paleo. We've made some changes to it um, for what we see works better for women. We've got a little less emphasis on the plant, on the animal fat, a little more on the plant fat, and then really tuning into the veggies and then what kind and amount of carbohydrates work for you. So some of the program is kind of really getting those women started on figuring it out. But a lot of women know what works for them. So the next step for all of us is maybe we know gluten or wine or sugar or, you know, histamines, or you might know that's like, this is not working for me, Mm -hmm. but there's so much we come up against trying to commit to that. And some of it is practical stuff. Like, I don't know how to cook this meal. And Sarah's amazing at that. But so much of us- I'm hungry just instantly when you said that. (laughs) As you were saying. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm but so saying. many women, what they're, what they're coming up against is, you know, they feel like it's unfair. Like, well, mm. my girlfriend looks like this and she's a vegan. So why shouldn't, should I be doing that? Or, mm-hmm. you know, Sarah can eat this and, you know, so-and-so can do that workout or I, sh-, you know, and you've, some women just really have all that like restriction and the unfairness. And that just kind of keeps us in this place where all of it feels like a struggle. And, you know, we say like, we can't change the biochemistry or the physiology of it. If you have a histamine intolerance, you might have to go on this like super restrictive diet temporarily. If you have a gluten sensitivity or a dairy sensitivity or like me with PCOS, I got to stay away from sugar. Like that's just, or I pay the price. And so getting to a point where you can do that and it's not another stress where it just feels like an act of self-love. It's, you know, not a thing. Like at this stage, I don't, I can't, I don't do well on coffee. I don't do well on sugar. I don't do well on gluten. And like, I don't suffer with those things, but we see so many women just get stuck in the frustration of it. And that's not sustainable because there's only so long you can feel like crap and continue to make yourself do something. And again, it goes back to stress. You know, I'm known for hormones. Sarah's known for paleo and fitness. And our book has all that, but there's so much of it. Like we've gone off the deep end with stress management because it, again, it all is going to come back to how happy we are at the end of the day. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And with that said, let's hit one more of these pillars. And this has come up a couple of times, but like, let's actually dissect this statement, which is to be who you are. Yeah, right. And I know when I really started to do that work myself, I was like, I don't even know. I have no idea who I am. I have completely lost myself in mothering and wifing and everyday paleo that I don't know what that even means. Like, what does Sarah like to do? What is Sarah? And I think for people, especially who are wired, like Brooke and I, who are type A and really driven, we've, I know for me, I sometimes feel like who I am needs to be really big and it needs to be expensive expansive and take up a lot of space and be impactful and important. And then I just feel overwhelmed and like, I can't do it right. And I'm struggling. It's a, I'm just struggling always with that. Right. And being who I am is actually in it, not in a negative way, but it's much smaller and more compact and easier than that. And who I am likes to be out in nature. And I need that for my soul to be complete. Like I need to go outside. I have to go hiking. I have to feel like the hardness of that. And I have to feel the vastness and largeness of the world and the universe to be able to be back in my own self. Like that's who I am, right? I need music. I need to sing out loud. Even if my kids tell me I'm a horrible singer, like I need to be goofy. I need to laugh every day. I need affection. Like I need to be hugged and I need to be held close. And I need my kids to show me that they love me with their respect. Like it's like little things that make you who you are, right? Like um, I, the thing that I love to do more than anything else is to cook delicious food and feed people that I care about. And I care about everybody, but you know, whoever wants to show up, I mean, Brooke knows this about me, right? Like if Going you come to, to my house, host <laughs> guest at Sarah's is the best. You just feel so loved. I'm going to feed you. And it, and it doesn't, people think that those small things are not what's going to make a difference or change the world. Or, you know, if I listen to my favorite music, is that really going to make a big impact? And I'm here to tell you that it will. It will make a huge impact on the bigger things you want to do if you want to do bigger things. And if you don't, that's 
okay too. It's totally all right to keep it small because if I die tomorrow, not being on Oprah or not having a New York Times bestselling book, I am not going to be thinking about that. I'm going to be thinking about how I said yes to my kid when he wanted to go outside and, and scooter. And, you know, mm -hmm. I played basketball because I had the ability to do that. And I hiked that mountain and, you know, I cooked that food because it made me feel real and whole and authentic. So it's not, it's not complicated. It's about really saying yes to what feels good. That's positive because what we end up doing is when we have that hole and we have that void and we're not in our own selves is we distract with things that aren't who we are and yeah. aren't good for us. So that's so true. So stressful to, not, so stressful to not be who you are. And we don't realize that. And, you know, we don't do a lot of stuff for play, you know, for just mm -hmm. for the sake of like just doing it. You play? Know, like you mean hobbies? like going to a yeah. play? Well, like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> well, we yeah. don't, you know, many of us had hobbies when we were younger, but life takes over and we don't have make time to just again like be who you are it's not going to get the dishes done and it's not going to you know further my career to play the piano for 10 minutes but it's an expression of who I am and it's something I need to prioritize and I think women hear this we've actually talked about this recently in the women we co with the women we coach they're like I always forget that one to be yeah. joyful I just don't have time mm. for it and mm -hmm. we're like if from, if where you're at now is feeling hangry and feeling super stressed out and terrible would one minute of joy be possible mm. like we can all find 60 seconds you know yeah. and so i think it's we've got to prioritize it and we might find um that'll i think you know it allows you to do more it allows you to show up in the ways that you do need to show up in a big mm -hmm. way when you show up for yourself in in the smaller ways and we just see so often with women that they're just so don't even remember who they are what they like life has gone on and we ask them what they want to do for joy or play. And they're like, first of all, I don't have time. And second of all, I wouldn't even know. Like, I know what my yeah. husband likes and my kids like. And I know how my clients like to be treated. And I don't know who I am anymore. So it's it's work to maybe find it. But, yeah, we said a couple times in the book that when it really came down to it with putting this together, we don't think anything's more stressful than feeling like you can't be who you are. Yeah, and so often, and I know that I struggle with this too, it's like finding the self-worth to be okay with being who you are. You know, I mean, that's so huge, right? It's like, am I even, do I even deserve this? Do I even deserve this joy? And Is it enough? Is it enough? To right. Just be me. Right, exactly. Wow. This is like, <laughs> I mean, when even just the, the it's a three-letter word, joy. It's, yeah. it's such a... It's such a powerful word. It's there's mm -hmm. so much there's so much to it, and just really checking in with yourself, like, have I experienced joy today? And the I think a reason we don't do that is that we think that the, all these conditions need to be met yeah. in order mm -hmm. for us to to allow ourselves to experience joy. But it's available like every microsecond. And what I love is you guys, even if they if, even if it might seem on the surface to be very like meta and. But yeah. these are very practical, real things. Like you can access joy, yeah. you know, yeah. here, just do these things, you know. So you guys have a lot of that. So um, let's shift gears now and let's talk a little bit more on the nutrition side. Because you got a section, women, paleo, and carb confusion. And I heard earlier, I, I think it was you, Sarah, that said uh, carb tipping point. So let's talk a little bit about this carb confusion and also this uh, pops as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, two things. Well, I think the carb thing is starting to be talked about more, fortunately, in our community. But it is something that, you know, is so convoluted. And what I used to not understand is that I was going to be completely different than Brooke or mm -hmm. um, my husband or, you know, uh, my best friend. As far as what my body needs, my unique hormonal profile and how I respond to carbohydrates, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, that hormone talk, you know, what are your aces saying to you? You when you eat a certain carbohydrate. And sometimes it's not just the amount of carbs that you're eating, but the type of carbs that you're eating. So we have a very um, clear system in the book on how women can start to tune into what their unique carb tolerance is. And again, it goes back to our health being fluid that this could change too, right? Which is frustrating, I think, for some women, women at first where they're like, I just want to figure it out and I want it to be, be that way. Yeah forever, right? But that's not the case because depending on maybe how much sleep you got that night or on what your exercise looks like, or if you are able to handle more exercise and then that changes, it's a 
very likely your unique carb tolerance might change too. Or like Brooke said earlier, if you get a new diagnosis, right? Like you might have to look at what your body is saying to you and how it's responding to the timing of your carbs, the amount of your carbs. And it sounds complex when we first start talking about it, but it really is not that hard. And most women figure it out within a couple of weeks of how to really dial it in for who they who they are right now. And the good news is, is once you have it figured out and your health starts to be a little bit more even and you're more in homeostasis, it's not like every day you're going to have to change, you know, oh my gosh, now yeah. I, what do I do today? You know, it's, and then you start to hear and notice and listen like, okay, I need to adjust my next meal based on what I ate at my last meal or didn't eat at my last meal. So, you know, I can't unfortunately say this is what you need to do, but we can give you a really good jumping off point. And it's, you know, very detailed, lined out in the book, how to do that, fortunately. So yeah, and it does change. I'm a good example as someone with PCOS in my twenties, I just didn't eat carbs and that was fine. Like kept my weight stable, kept my PCOS in check. And then, you know, fast forward stress, a newborn baby, you know, not getting any sleep. And I was kind of a wreck and one, you know, took my blood sugar and I was like, I'm 62. And I was like, no wonder. And it's just, I was so ingrained with like, this is who I am and this is how I need to mm -hmm. eat because this is what my hormones diagnosis was that I just, I just completely ignored something so simple as I wasn't eating enough. And, yeah. um, and now I'm in a place where I'm back to being, you know, low carb. I've dabbled in keto, like, and that works for me now, but it didn't then. And so what we want to teach women with the book is with all this stuff out there, even all the stuff in our book, but then you take it one step further with keto, carnivore, intermittent fasting. How does a woman know, like, how's that going to land for me? And especially when you see, well, I want to look like Sarah, so I'll just do what she's doing, right? Or your girlfriend's doing whatever, this workout. And so we teach women what we call our hormone hierarchy. So there's a couple hormones you have to honor first and foremost, and that's those delicate, it's the low cortisol, the low thyroid. Mm -hmm. And when you kind of adhere to those recommendations, so for me in that phase of being a new mom, I still had PCOS, so I still had insulin resistance, and I still had estrogen and progesterone imbalances, but my cortisol was what was really, you know, and that's higher up on the hierarchy. So I needed to make sure I honored that with how I was training, a little more frequent meals. I couldn't just do two meals a day like I had done before, um, you know, maybe a little bit more carbohydrate and a small amount. And so you still have to honor all of that's going on with you, but we teach you to kind of go through it in a way, because what happens is women just wreck themselves because they work for the plan instead of the plan working for them. Like mm -hmm. this is how it's laid out. This is how you keto. This is how you whole 30. This is how you do whatever it is. And those are the rules. And we want to be like that good little dieter mm -hmm. and we just do it and show up for that. And just, we dig yeah. in deeper when it doesn't work for us, instead of saying, maybe this isn't working for me. We're like, I'll paleo harder. I'll CrossFit harder. And we've, sure. you know, we've that both is done we've it both to, done that. to death. And it just gives me chills thinking about it. Cause you know, I was in the Rob Wolf days. Like he was my mentor. I worked yeah. for him and he taught me everything that I knew in that moment. And it was fantastic and it changed my life. But same thing, just hearing you talk about like after you had the kids, right? And you're like, that I can't. Different. And I'm like, okay, I just need to paleo more and work out harder because why am I feeling so awful? I was feeling so yeah. great. So and you're the problem. Yeah. So it was me. It you're was not all going me. hard enough. Yeah. 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 Wow. So it's more stress. We do In, that. Yeah. We do yeah. that to ourselves all the time. Yeah. yeah. I just well, women a sweet always want to go. Yeah, you just, you just, like you right. wanted to go back <laughs> and a nap. Put yeah. it in the muffin form, <laughs> right? Ideally, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that sounds good. We are getting hungry. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> Is it me? Is like, it I'm hearing about good. everybody getting food made for them. Uh, and wait, I'm you just, see the recipes you know, in there. They're so delicious. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. but I want Sarah to make make it for you. I will. Make me you something. know, I will. Yeah. I'd love to. Yeah. So the, I mean, the carb thing was a big, um, not really transition from paleo, but it was something we wanted to address in a little bit different way. And then the pops. So the other thing that we saw for women in particular with estrogen and thyroid imbalances um, that can uniquely, obviously estrogen, especially for women is, you know, this, you know, we're inundated with these persistent organic pollutants and most of them are fat soluble. And so they're going to be in animal fat and even in our grass fed, you know, our high quality products that we want women to eat. And it's not that women can't eat those. And it's not that they are off our plan, but what, what a lot of women do when they go on a more meat based paleo diet is it's lots of bacon and it's the mm -hmm. ribeye steak and it's all that stuff. It's cause it's satiating. It's delicious. And 
we find that just sometimes it's tweaking where women are getting their fat, like maybe taking a little leaner cut of meat more often during the week and um, opting for more avocado, coconut, olives, olive oil, those plant-based fats really shifts a lot of that estrogen dominant stuff that happens. The breast tenderness, the bad PMS, the heavy periods, the irritability. And it's such a simple shift that's still very much on that paleo construct, but it's something that's just not talked about that much. And again, it's a very simple tweak. Like it doesn't change calories or macros or anything. You just, you know, opt for like upping mm-hmm. the fat from a plant source. And it's oftentimes we've seen that the be game changer. just a mm-hmm. really, again, simple thing that makes a huge difference and not mm-hmm. something we saw really talked about, but was really, really important for women. Yeah. Uh, this is so good. <laughs> I'm having a good time. All right. So let's jump in and talk about the exercise side. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, there's a lot of, mm-hmm. especially when we're talking about stress, Yeah, we can be, we find ourselves on one end of the spectrum or the other, you know, like exercise, like exercising harder yeah. or just like yeah. this keeps getting omitted. Right. And you bring up the point that, you know, for decades prior to maybe about 20 years ago, um, it was really seen as like cardio is the way it is the, oh, the way, it, yeah. it is the, the gateway way, yes. to everything yeah. right if you do more cardio you'll have cover model body you'll have a fat bank account and models of choice right mm-hmm. so whether that's like um fabio is the guy for you or <laughs> never mind so well, i don't know why my brain because you're back in the 80s it's like cardio <laughs> yeah. phase. low fat and cardio. fabio will be your guy and i and, and the thing is we were so indoctrinated with that mm-hmm. you know and i remember for me, seeing exercise as aerobics, you know, when I was a kid yeah. and there was books even, you know, there's like the joy of running, like this yeah. old school book, but then there's like, there's no other joy of books. It's like the joy of running and the joy of sex. And then that's it. <laughs> that's it. There's no joy of lifting weights. <laughs> right. Can I get a joy of lifting weights book? Yes, but, we wrote one I think we wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> so you say that today, uh, many fitness gurus say that uh, cardio will flat out kill you. And then there's the other camp that says cardio is the only form of exercise you need, but you say the truth is really in between. Well, it, it is. Well, it's obviously, again, our whole thing is customizing a plan that works for you. So it goes back to that, like know who you are and you can't out-exercise a hormonal imbalance. You just can't mm. do it, right? You can't exercise yourself into that, you know, Fabio relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it just isn't gonna happen. So um, it goes back to understanding what your body needs and how it's going to respond to its exercise plan. And, you know, I like to say that exercise should not ever produce like an exaggerated response, right? Like you shouldn't be on the floor wanting to die afterwards. Or, you know, we have an acronym in the book called RAMP where it really helps you kind of pay attention to if you're over-exercising or not. Because for women who are super stressed out and exhausted, like me, I live in that camp, I need that hit of adrenaline, or I think that I do. So I go beat myself up in the gym because I get that little boost and I feel better, but then the next day I want to die. Like you shouldn't have that exaggerated of of a response to exercise. It should ultimately, like anything else you do, make you feel better and it should promote longevity and it should be something that's sustainable, not something that you cringe when you think of having to go to the gym again, but you know you have to do it. It shouldn't be punishing. It should be nourishing, right? And we're not saying, oh, you'll never be sore or it's not going to be hard because that's also not true. I think we should be working hard. We're meant to work hard. We're meant to lift heavy things. We're meant to be agile and mobile. Um, But we've you know, sat our way and stressed our way and over exercise our way into injury, inflammation, not wanting to work out, having a really unhealthy relationship with going to the gym. You know, what is that supposed to even look like or feel like anymore? Um, I remember driving to the gym and literally having butterflies in my stomach. Like I was about to have to go do something really scary and horrific where now it's like, I know what my body needs to be okay. And Mm. I go to the gym because it's a safe place for me to be. It's not about comparing myself with what any other women or men are doing. It's not about, you know, even for me right now, it's not even about like what my next PR is going to be. And sometimes it is. I went on um, a pretty consistent strength building regimen with my husband over the summer. And I got really stinking strong, stronger than I've been in a long time. And guess what? 
then I was super stressed out and we were in the middle of this book stuff and I hurt myself. And then instead of like the old me would have been like, oh my God, Sarah, you're so dumb and punish myself and figure out how to, you know, get back in the gym as fast as possible. And then I'd probably would have hurt myself again. But instead I'm like, okay, so that wasn't working. It was too much for me. Like, how can I reconstruct my life now to still be strong and fit and not get hurt again? Or if I do get hurt, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. So the program in the book is really about figuring out where you are right now with your fitness Mm -hmm. and how are you going to have a sustainable gym life? We want women to lift heavy, but we understand too that there might be some caveats to that at the beginning where you might need to heal your core and pelvic floor. If you've had a baby, if you're postpartum, even if it's 20 years, there's not a lot of emphasis on that in the strength training world. Often you join um, a gym that might look like mine and you come in and you're thrown into a group class without an assessment or understanding, you know, what you need to focus on first or looking at any mobility issues. We are so proud of what we put into this book as far as the fitness plan, because it's very comprehensive and we want women to be empowered enough to take our plan, go to a personal trainer, go to a gym and ask the right questions and know what responses they're supposed to get to learn how their bodies are supposed to operate, to be okay with the fact that we all have imbalances and that we all need to work on certain aspects of our strength and that it's all going to, it's going to look different for everybody, but to be empowered in ourselves is key. That's being strong. That's strength really. So, and yeah, what we see out there was either women. um, So we, we, we say in the book too, that, you know, exercise is powerful medicine and Mm -hmm. it can be really healing or it can really wreck us. And we've both overdone it and caused a lot of damage. We know a lot of people listening or watching probably have as well. Um, But we, so we want women to lift weights, but being able to, there's sort of two camps, right? You're either lifting really light for women or you're crossfitting and maybe there's parts of that intensity or the volume Mm -hmm. or the weight, the heaviness of it is not quite right for you. So how do we get women to embrace this amazing healing tool with strength training, Mm -hmm. but not wreck themselves. And that was a big undertaking to Mm -hmm. put together a plan that just like the food, they can follow the hormone hierarchy and know how to adjust and make, again, make it work for them because we are just, yeah, we're good. Like I follow the rules and I'm going to do it this way. (laughs) And, um, so we wanted women to lift weights and we wanted women to be strong and we know how important that is in terms of longevity Mm -hmm. and our health as we get older. And so it's really important important for women to be able to do that. But of course we don't want anyone to get hurt. And then we don't even want anyone to overdo it either. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. This is, this is getting back to the foundational stuff you guys have been talking about, yeah. which is listening to your body, mm-hmm. you know, and really tuning in and, and, and assessing what's right for you right now. Yep. And it's right. not taking any of this stuff off the table. It's just yeah. like, what's right for me right now? And it right. might change. Right. Yeah. And it might, mm-hmm. it, it, it is going change. to change. It will yeah. change. <laughs> like you said, health is it's fluid. Gonna, yes. Yeah. yeah. So the, I, there's so many things I want to ask you about, but we'll talk about one more thing okay. before I reluctantly let you go. Um, <laughs> let's talk about, we've mentioned thyroid a couple of times mm-hmm. and I think most folks are pretty well aware. It's like the kind of big regulator of your metabolism. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of, th- it's like an epidemic, you yeah. know, with thyroid issues. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit about thyroid nutrition and exercise recommendations, specifically if folks are dealing with hypothyroidism or maybe Hashimoto's, but yeah. they have low thyroid. Let's talk mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. So there's the reason this is on the top of our hormone hierarchy. So we can't do anything that's going to make our thyroid imbalances worse. And you're not going to get this because, you know, we pay the price for that so hard. Every cell in your body needs thyroid hormone. So when it's low, um, so there's some things nutritionally that we can do. So as far as, you know, thyroid stuff goes, there's a, you know, I mentioned the POPs. So there are some of those persistent organic pollutants that directly target the thyroid. So cleaning up the plastics, going organic, doing all those things, watching the sources of your animal fat and maybe watching the amounts of that, that's going to be really important for your thyroid. Um, So much, the majority of um, low thyroid in the Western world is Hashimoto's based. So that's an autoimmune attack. So we know that the paleo diet is a good starting place to decrease many aggravators there. You might be sensitive to chicken or something, you know, on paleo, um, but it's a good place for women to start. And we do talk in the book about 
taking that up a notch to AIP, taking that up a notch to histamine. But if it's new to you, that's a really good starting place. Um, so some of those things are really important as far as nutrition goes. And then when it comes to exercise, this is where we see so much problem for women is the, the over-exercising, the doing things wrong. Um, not only the over-exercising in terms of volume, which gen again generates oxidative stress that a woman with Hashimoto's who's already experiencing immune system and oxidative stress and inflammation dysregulation, it's going to impact them so much more. They're the ones that are like, I do a workout and then I have to stay in bed the next day. Or I do a workout and I can't get back to the gym because I feel so wrecked. And so getting those, you know, knowing how to, but unfortunately what we see for women with low cortisol and low thyroid is they're told, well, you can't exercise at all. Right. You can walk, right. maybe do some yoga. And we know that letting a woman's muscle mass go down is, is bad for so many things, right? And especially it's, for women who are used to working out, just the stress the of all stress of a sudden of, telling a woman like me who tends yeah. to be more in the low cortisol, low thyroid camp, oh, you can't train anymore. Like, that's well, then stressful. just kill me now because right? that's part of who I am, right? Like, yeah. I need to lift weights to feel okay. Yeah. So there's so much that can be overdone in this situation, but we wanted again to put in some of the, that heavier lift. And again, heavy is all relative, right? Mm -hmm. Heavy for... Sarah might be a barbell on her back and heavy for someone else might be standing up and down out of a chair, like in a good form. That's the body weight is where they're at. So whatever is heavy for you with plenty of rest, with plenty of recovery in order to be able to keep training. Cause we always say, we care that you're coming to the, that you're able to lift and be strong in 10 years. Not if you go again seven times this week, right? It's those, yeah. what's the long-term plan. So we see women with thyroid stuff overdoing it easily because of the inflammation and oxidative stress. And because nothing's going to go on in that cell if thyroid hormones not there to bind to it. So a muscle cell is not going to contract right because it's the mm -hmm. thyroid hormone stimulating events in the cell that help that cell do what its job is. So a muscle mm -hmm. cell needs to be able to contract. So we also see on the flip side of that when women are low thyroid and let's say they're doing a, cl a class where they're lifting a light weight 20 times. So you're acting asking this tendon to take all the brunt of that stress because that muscle cell is not getting stimulated. And so what do women have? Shoulder problems, hip problems, knee problems, all these tendon issues because they're just asking this muscle to go again or spin classes and they get all these hip problems, mm -hmm. just asking that muscle to go again and, and again when it's not getting its own stimulation. So there's, or the thyroid stimulation. So there's a lot of stuff that in the book, I think we help them not overdo, but we also tell them how to get a thorough thyroid assessment because that's the other problem is mm -hmm. women get a screening TSH typically, which is just one of the many th things we need to look at on the thyroid cascade to really evaluate from your brain to the cell. Are you hitting all the steps? And when it falls apart somewhere in the middle and all we have is some of those basic screening, those women get sent on their way. Like thyroid's fine. And they're like, now what? Now what do I do? Mm. So thyroid's a really, really delicate one. And yeah. um, like I said, exercise is really powerful. And we can use it to help heal these women. It can be anti-inflammatory. It can be um, stimulate stem cells. I mean, it, strength training is really powerful. Mm -hmm. And as we age for so many reasons and for our metabolism, we need good muscle mass. So mm -hmm. we don't think it's good advice to tell a woman who's in hormone haywire, you can't train anymore. You can't lift a weight. You just have yeah. to do it in a way that honors those things again from the top down. Absolutely. Wow. Great, great, great stuff. This is so good. I want to ask you like literally so many more things, but this has been so awesome and I love hanging out with you guys. This is like, I feel smarter you know, just <laughs> absorbing this and and I love you. I, I love the energy that you guys have and I love the fact that you care so much about this. I love the fact that you've walked in these shoes and you continued and you're so authentic with it and I just really appreciate it. And if you could... First of all, can you let folks know we're going to, you you already gave me a little heads up, but you've got like a lot of bonuses <laughs> people are going to get access to. So let's, what, what do people get when they get hangry? Oh, we laugh just because we so finished much. the book and then we just dumped like the rest of ourselves into these bonuses. So yeah, yeah it's a lot. It's you get so much. We wanted to really give, um, so there's some really beautiful downloads of like, you know, the ramp and the aces and all those, act, all the systems. Mm -hmm. So there's some really beautiful things to just print out and have 
all those little tools, uh, you know, right there for you. We have a beautiful download of the five pillars and some of our other stress management tools. So you can print them out, not have to flip through your book to get them. Mm -hmm. But then in addition to that, because everything is so customizable, Sarah put together some workouts so Mm -hmm. you won't have, you can even like take the template and not even have to figure it out yourself. So if you come up low cortisol or low thyroid or Mm -hmm. whatever, we've got some pre-programmed workouts and then Sarah did some amazing kitchen stuff. So Mm -hmm. helping us, you know, and one of the things, again, we talk about opting out of overwhelm is, you know, when you tell a woman she's got to cook this food for herself, like, oh my gosh, like I don't have the time. And Mm -hmm. so Sarah designed so beautifully these recipes that you can take one recipe and easily turn it into four different meals cook once and so that's amazing and then if you like digging into the nitty-gritty with the hormone stuff I did four webinars we did one on thyroid physiology and labs and medications one on PCOS one on menopause and one on brain and neurotransmitters so there's a lot of stuff so if you want to go deeper or if you just want us to do it for you we we covered it it all all. (laughs) yeah so I mean you can start now like you can if even if you don't have the book yet you can Go to the bonus page if you order it yep. and get all that stuff. Get all that stuff. So just, just by now. buying the Pre-order. book, you get yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. So what's the link? Where do people go? Uh, you can get all of those bonuses at sarahanddrbrook.com forward slash hangry book. So yeah, it's Perfect. all there. Perfect. Yep. Yep. And so this is coming out about, people are going to get access to this still. They're getting the bonuses yeah. about a week before the book comes out. Go order the book now. Yes. yes. If you are a woman, you need to have this book. If you care about a woman Mm. you need to get her this book and get the scoop these bonuses up as well because these these things are really priceless and do that like asap last thing i want to ask you about is and we'll start with you what is the model that you're here to set for other people with the way you live your life personally Yeah. So for me, it's funny. This is something that's come up a lot. I've gotten very clear on this finally over the last few years. And that is me being in integrity, which means living by those pillars. Um, That's the stuff that keeps me up at night if I'm not feeling like I'm walking the walking my talk. And so being on one hand, following the pillars, especially like finding committing to what works for me. Like I there's some stuff I don't necessarily like that doesn't work for me, but staying committed to that in a way that is feels effortless because I'm not suffering over it. But part of also being um, in integrity is, you know, Sarah, like you said, authentic. Sarah and I don't know how to do it any other way. Um, Just being able to show women like we are, we're the anti-gurus. We are, you know, many steps ahead of the women we work with because we do this every day, but we are real women with real demands who still struggle Mm -hmm. and our lives are not perfect, um, but we're in there doing the work. Awesome. Thank you Mm -hmm. for that. Sarah, how about you? What is the model? <laughs> you make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> what is the model that you're here to set for other people with how you live your life? Uh, for me, it's the work that I'm doing right now, and that is being in total radical acceptance of all of me, which is not at all perfect. And we all have our own stuff, right? So as I grow older and really decide to get to know myself, having to totally just live in self-forgiveness and self-love and self-worth and understand that I'm worth it and that we're all worth it. And I think that we would all be so much kinder to each other and to ourselves if we did that and modeled that for each other and know that it's not ever going to be exactly how it should be. Like it's not ever going to be perfect. It, It can't be. And that's what makes life so full and rich and beautiful. And it is also one of our pillars is being fully engaged in life. And that doesn't mean just showing up for the stuff that's good. It means for me committing to really showing up for all of it and allowing myself to feel completely what I need to feel when it's painful, when it's scary, when I'm unsure, when I'm anxious and, you know, when I'm angry, like those are all parts of me and I react differently to those parts of me when I'm in more acceptance of it. So it's hard work, but it's It's what I want. It's what I want for everyone to be okay with as hard as that work is. It's, it's very, it's very liberating in a lot of ways. Love it. Love it. You are the best (laughs) and collectively it's just out of this world. So (laughs) seriously, thank you for putting this information together. All of the heart and soul, the work, the hours, it's really something special. 
And again, just thank you for being you. I really appreciate it. And thank you for coming to hang out with me. Yeah, thank you. We thank really you. appreciate it too. Yeah, and for us to be together to do this. We love it's it. really yeah. cool. So thank you so much. Yeah. Magic, it's a magic moment. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. Uh, I think it was best said at the end here that you are worth it. And really starting to understand that and cultivate that knowing. I love one of the mantras that they talk about in the book that everything is okay. And so often there's so many different things going on in our lives. And sometimes we do, we realize that things are okay, but especially when things get a little bit stressed, we're getting pulled in different directions. When things don't go our way, just remembering you are okay. And they also mention because of the realism, sometimes it's not. Things are not okay and not lying to yourself, but just saying things are going to be okay. Yes. You know, there's this great statement that this too shall pass. And just understanding whether it's the good stuff or the not so good stuff, everything is fluid, just like our health. And a book like Hangry is one of those things that can help you to really cultivate that knowing. And so again, pick it up like yesterday and pick up all these bonuses. And that was Sarah and Dr. Brooke Dot com forward slash hangry book and you can get all of those bonuses right now all right i appreciate you so much for hanging out with me today if you got a lot of value out of this please share this out with your friends and family on social media you could tag me i'm at sean model on instagram and twitter and you could tag them as well what are your instagram i am at sarah underscore frigoso Perfect. And I am, um, that's you on Instagram. Instagram. You're just Sarah Fragoso on Facebook. I am Mm -hmm. Better by Dr. Brooke on Instagram and Facebook. There you have it. Tag Mm -hmm. us. Let everybody know what you thought about this episode. And I appreciate you immensely. We've got some powerhouse episodes coming your way. So make sure to stay tuned. All right. Much, much, much more to come. I appreciate you very, very much once again. Take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon.